This is MathGuide.com. My name is Mark Karadimos. Today we're going to solve quadratic equations via the method of factoring. And in this video there's going to be four sections. So the first section we're going to talk about what is a quadratic equation. In our second section we are going to talk about our previous videos that talk about how to factor. And then our third section we're going to go over an example, our first example. And our fourth section we're going to talk about our second example. All right, so let's get to our first section. In this section we're going to talk about what is exactly a quadratic equation. So let's start with a specific example of a quadratic equation. So this is a quadratic equation because the highest exponent that you see is a 2. Of course, there is an exponent with this term. Uh, however, since you don't see it, there's a 1. So in other words, just, just an x there. I mean, x squared really just stands for x times x, which means there are two factors of x there. So the highest power on our variable x is 2. That's why we call it a quadratic equation. While we're on the topic of quadratic equations, let's get to some terminology. So there are three terms here. The terms are always separated by positives and negatives. So you can see I have a negative and a positive, so there are three terms here. And when there's a term with a variable, the number in front of the variable is called a coefficient. So the coefficient of our squared term is 5. The coefficient of our x term is negative 7. And this does not have a variable, so we call this a constant. So the constant term is 2. This quadratic equation is in a special form. It's called descending form. What is meant by that term, descending, is that the powers go from highest to smallest. So this is degree 2, this is degree 1, this is degree 0, because there are no factors of x here. So we say it's in decreasing powered form, so it's decreasing as opposed to ascending, which would be in the opposite order, where you would put things from smallest to greatest power. Okay, so we call this descending form. So let's get to our next section about videos. This is our second section. Uh, since this video is explaining how to solve quadratic equations using this method called factoring, it is important to uh, understand that it is a prerequisite for uh, you know, understanding this whole format. So if your factoring skills are weak, I suggest that you visit our three other videos. We have a video on uh, factoring out the greatest common factor. We've got a video on uh, factoring a difference of two squares. And we also have a video on factoring trinomials into uh, product of two binomials. So I suggest that you look at those videos, watch those videos, so that you will be ready to understand how they can and how those skills can be used for uh, solving quadratic equations. So we are now ready to try our first example of how to solve a quadratic equation. Before we dig into this problem, we have to realize that a few things have to be in place. One thing that has to exist is we have to have a zero on one side. Since we have our zero on one side, we could check that off the list. Another thing that has to take place is that our polynomial has to be in descending order. What that means is our highest power has to be written first, then the first degree term has to be second, and then our term with no x's, or a zero degree term, was written last. And since it's in that form, called descending form, power 2, power 1, power 0, see it's everything, all the powers in descending form, we could check that off the list. And we are now ready to factor. Okay, so when we factor this, we grab the last term, and here we could see that we have a negative 24. What we do now is brainstorm. We think, what are all the ways that we can multiply to get negative 24? So, for instance, I could do 
1 times negative 24. I could do negative 1 times 24. I could add those together. If I add those together, I get negative 23. If I add these together, I get positive 23. I'm trying to get a sum of 2. So we use this middle number to check for the sum. So the last number is used to check for the product, and then the middle number is used for the sum. So we obviously haven't hit it. We haven't found a sum that's 2. All right, well, let's think of some other numbers that multiply to be negative 24. So let's try 2 times negative 12, or maybe negative 2 times positive 12. These add up to be negative 10. These add up to be positive 10. Still no luck. Okay, let's try 6 times negative 4, or maybe it's negative 6 times positive 4. These add up to be 2. These add up to be negative 2. Oops. Try that again. Negative 2. So we want a sum of 2, and there you go. We found it. So our two factors are 6 and negative 4. So I'm going to write now x is the leading value or the leading term in each one of these factors. And then what I'm going to put is one of them I'm going to put 6, positive 6, and the other one's going to be a minus 4. Now it doesn't matter what order we write it. We could put the x minus 4 first and the x plus 6 second, as long as we have those two terms together. So I have now one equation, except now it's factored as a product of two binomials. Now this is kind of in an interesting form because the only way I can multiply two things to get zero is if one of these values is equal to zero. It's, it's either this x plus 6 is equal to zero, or we've got the x minus 4 equal to zero. I mean, really think about it. There's no other way to multiply two things together to get zero. Either this is equal to zero or that's equal to zero. And by the way, that's called the multiplication property of zero. It's beautiful because we could take this equation and bifurcate it, split it into two different equations right there. So now that I have two really easy linear equations to solve, they're a breeze. So you subtract 6 from both sides, I add 4 to both sides, and now I have my two answers. So, you could write this in set notation. We'd say the answer is x such that x is equal to negative 6 or x is equal to 4. And there you have it. We've got our two solutions. Now we're ready for our second example. So we are now going to solve another quadratic equation. So let me put it up there. Now before we attempt to factor or use the method of factoring, let's be aware that we have to have a zero. All right, so in order to get a zero, I'm going to take this term and move it over to the other side. For those of you who are not very familiar about how to move terms over, I'm really subtracting the 12x from both sides. It's just an algebraic technique. So you'll see that I will get a zero on the right side. Now when I arrange these terms on the left side, I do want to put them in descending order. I want to put the highest term first, the next highest term, power term second, and then the constant term last. So I do want to put the x squared minus 12x plus 32 in that order, and now I'm ready to factor. Okay, again, when you begin to factor, you look at the constant term, you write that down, and again, you're just going to brainstorm all the different ways you could multiply to get 32. So we could do negative 1 times negative 32. We could do 1 times 32. Now it turns out that when I add these, I'm getting negative 33. When I add these, I'm getting 33. Remember, we look at the x term, or the middle term, and that is the value we're looking for for a sum. So I'm trying to get a sum of negative 12. Now of course I want a sum of negative. I don't want a positive sum. So you could see that in order for me to get a negative sum, my problem has to contain negatives. So I'm, for me to multiply two positive numbers, I'm never going to get a negative sum. 
So I know that my factors all have to be negative. Using two positive numbers to get a positive 32 is never going to give me a negative sum. So that's how I know I better just stick to negatives. So I could do negative 2 times negative 16. Well, that has a sum of negative 18. I'm getting closer. Life is good. Still not working though, so I need to move on. So let's try negative 4 times negative 8. They multiply to, to positive 32, and they add up to be negative 12. And there you have it. It looks like we found the winning combination. It adds up to our middle term. So now what I'm going to do is write our factors. So I'm going to put x minus 4, x minus 8. Of course, the order in which we write those factors is not important as long as I just have the two factors there. Now I'm going to set these two factors equal to 0. Again, I'm using the multiplication property of 0. And I'm bifurcating this equation to do that. So it's either this factor is equal to 0 or it's this factor equal to 0. Now I'm going to add 4 to both sides. I'm going to add 8 to both sides. There you have it. So I have my two solutions to this quadratic equation. Again, sometimes people write this in set notation. The answer is x, such that x equals 4, or x equals 8. All right. Make sure you go back to mathguide.com. Check out our interactive quizzes and our instructional videos. Take care.